everyone. Welcome to Rain Francis Art for Kids. My name is Rain. In this series, Halloween Party, we draw and paint and create everything that has to do with this spooky season of Halloween. So let's begin. It's spooky season and today I'm going to show you how to draw Count Dracula. So let's begin. This is what you'll need for today's drawing lesson. You're going to need a piece of paper or a drawing pad. I have a dollar store drawing pad. It's eight and a half by 11 inches wide. You're going to need a pencil, an eraser, and if you have an old paintbrush lying around that you haven't used for paint, you can use this to brush off your page. This is dollar store, I believe. And we're going to need some color. Well, the main colors we're using are black, red, and gray. And I have this marker here. It's a fine tip marker. It's just, that just means it has a small tip. So I'm probably going to use this, but if you don't have a fine tip marker or a black marker, you can use your black coloring pencil. So let's clear off our canvas and let's begin. Let's draw Dracula. He's going to be a cute Dracula today. <laughs> so the first thing we'll do is we'll draw his head. So we've got a circle for his head. And then we'll draw his body. We're drawing shapes and then we'll add detail after. So his body is going to be kind of a rectangle, but it's coming in a little bit like this. That almost looks like an ice cream cone. And then we'll draw his legs, which come down here. He's got short little legs and then his feet or his shoes. Okay. And then we're going to draw his arms. So we're going to draw his shoulders like this, sort of round sleeves like this. And we're going to attach it to his body. Same thing here, a little round and bring it up and attach it to his body. Now let's draw his, mm, his hair. First, before we draw the hair, let's draw some ears and we're going to draw a little, they almost look like devil ears like this. Cause he is a monster. He doesn't have normal ears. And from the top of the ear, watch how I draw his hair. I'm just going up with a little curve and down. That's his hair but we're going to give him a little bit more hair. Watch what I do here. I'm just going to extend this up and give him a little hair like that. We're going to do some erasing, so don't worry. It looks kind of funny right now, but we're going to fix that. Okay, so why don't we give him his cape? He's got a collar on his cape. It goes behind his arm, just like that. Almost looks like a Hershey kiss. Same on the other side. And while we're up here, why don't we erase that line just before we add more detail. This line right here, the original top of the circle, we're going to erase that. And his hair is going to be black anyway, so you don't necessarily have to erase it, but I'm just going to do it so that you can see what everything looks like. And if you erased some of your other lines, just draw them back in. Okay. And while we're up here, why don't we draw his eyes? We'll give him two big oval eyes. Well, not too big. Regular sized oval eyes with a little oval here on the bottom. And we'll give him a big smile. And we'll give him his vampire teeth. One fang here and one fang here. <laughs> We'll go and put in some detail after. Now let's draw his hands. I'm giving him kind of claw hands. He's got, you see, just two. That's what I'm doing for him. Just giving him two little kind of claws like that. And we have to draw his cape. So watch how I draw his cape from the middle of his hand here. 
round and then up, down, up, down, up to his body. Same thing on the other side. From the middle of his hand, round, up, down, up, down, up. You got that? Now we're going to draw a little line here because this is going to be red, but we're going to put that black there. So a little line on each side. Okay. Now for his jacket, we're going to draw a little kind of triangle here and he's going to have a little round button there. That might not be a button, it might be a brooch. I don't know, but it's going to be a little black dot there. And then from the bottom of the, the upside down triangle, watch, we're going to do this. That's going to give him a collar. Alright? Now I think we've got everything drawn out. We can start coloring in. Let's start with our red color. Now the red is the inside of the cape and the cape's collar. So let's start coloring in the collar of the cape red. Now I drew my guy pretty small, but you can draw him bigger if you want. And the other one here. we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a second layer. Now all that means is that I am coloring it in a second time because I want the red to be very very vibrant looking. I want it to be very obvious and very deep color. Can you see the difference between one layer and two layers? I like two layers. I think two layers is always good. Okay, now we're going to do the inside of the cape. Same thing, red. Just try not to get any red into his hands and try not to get any into his uh, jacket. But the jacket is going to be black, so if you get any red in there by mistake, don't worry about it. It happens. The black can cover it. Remember to keep that little line that we drew there, that little shape. We're going to draw, we're going to color that in black, I mean. Now, if you're using a coloring pencil, don't press down too hard. You don't have to, because look what we did here. We applied a second layer, and we have a lovely deep red. So all we have to do is press very lightly, and apply more layers. Color in more times to get the color, the deepness, or the vibrance that we want. Or when it comes to black, we want to be, we want to have a dark black. So we'll give, we'll draw in, sorry, we'll color in two layers to make it darker. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a second layer in there right away. And I'm not pressing hard. And you can really see the difference right away. Hmm? Between one layer and two. And if you're using a coloring pencil, I want you to remember as you're coloring, turn your pencil a little bit once in a while. Always turn it because if you don't, it'll wear down all on one side and then your tip will break and you'll have to go and sharpen and every time we sharpen our pencil lasts less and less time so we want to be able to keep our art supplies for as long as possible so always remember to turn your pencil as you're coloring and the same thing goes for crayons. If you're using crayons, turn your crayon once in a while so you don't wear it down all on one side. I love this red. It's really nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the other side of the cape. Same thing. Be careful not to get any red into his hands or, and keep this black here. But like I said before, if you accidentally get some red 
where we want another color. Since it's going to be black, the jacket that is, it's going to cover the red. So don't worry about that too much. Just try your best. I want you to enjoy what you're doing. Don't forget to turn your pencil. If you're using markers today, then you don't have to turn your marker. Because usually when you use markers, you don't have to put layers. The color is already pretty vibrant. All right. I'm going to go in and put a second layer on the side of the cape. Do you like Dracula movies? <laughs> this time of year, it's, it's October right now where I'm living. And I live in the Northern Hemisphere, which means we have fall right now. In the Southern Hemisphere, you know, people who live in Australia. And I think some areas of South America, my ge geography isn't that great. They're starting spring right now but we are starting fall and fall is good Halloween weather if you ask me. All right, so we're done with the red. Let's grab our gray. And if you don't have gray, you can always use blue uh, or you could use one layer of black, but we're gonna put, we're gonna draw his, the collar of his jacket is gonna be gray because the rest of his jacket is black and we want to kind of make it a little bit different than the black. So just try not to get any of the gray onto the shirt underneath. We want that to stay white. And for the gray, I am only applying one layer. And I'm going to make his pants gray too. Again, because his jacket is black, and because his shoes are going to be black, we just want to make it look a little bit different. We don't want it to all sort of look like a big black blotch. All right, turn your pencil once in a while and don't press down too hard. Now it's up to you if you want to put a second layer of gray or blue or whatever color you're using. I'm not, I'm going to leave it one layer. So the next color is black and I'm going to use my coloring pencil. I'm going to start with his hair because his hair is black. Now for his hair, for the black, I'm definitely going to be using at least two layers because I want it to be a really nice dark black. I'm just going to be really careful not to get any black onto his face. because I'm choosing uh, for his skin color to be the same color as my page. You can have his skin any color you want. He does not have to be a white vampire, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and apply a second layer right away to his hair, because I want that to look really nice and dark. A dark, dark black. And I'm sure you can see the difference right away. That's the magic of layers. <laughs> you don't have to hurt your hand by pressing really hard to get a dark black color. You just have to put on more layers. And do you remember what a layer is? You're coloring it in a second time. The same thing goes with painting. If you apply paint once, if you're painting and you just paint once, and then you paint over it, you're painting on a second layer. There. Looking good so far. Oops, sorry, bat. I keep moving the bat out of the way. Now what I'm going to do is, let's see. Sleeves and jacket are going to be black. Sleeves and jacket. 
try not to get any black onto his hands. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a first layer all over the sleeves in the jacket and then I'm going to come back and do a second layer. Let's remember to turn our pencils once in a while so we don't wear them all down. And don't press down too hard. You don't need to. I love Dracula movies. There are a lot of them out there. One of the first Dracula movies I ever saw was an old one, a black and white movie. I don't remember the year, but it was a long time ago, before color. And um, the actor's name was Bella Lugosi. He was a very famous Dracula. And I painted him with watercolors, and I'm going to show you that painting right now. That's Bella Lugosi playing Dracula. And that was a lot of fun to do. And if you practice, you can definitely do paintings like that. I'm going to go ahead and put a second layer on the sleeves and on his jacket, and I'm remembering to turn my pencil. All right. So as I was saying, if you want to be able to paint and draw really well, all you have to do is practice. You need to learn some techniques, like the ones I'm showing you in my drawing lessons here about layers. But then you just have to go out on your own and start, start creating art on your own. Pick a subject and decide that you're going to draw that. And if you don't like the way you've drawn it, keep practicing. Look at photos. Go outside and look at a tree. Draw the tree. Just keep practicing. When you practice your drawing, this is called studies. Like if I decided to go outside and draw five of the trees in front of me, those are my tree studies. Just like studying your homework, right? You're practicing your art. You're doing studies. Okay, so the black jacket and sleeves are done. I'm going to do this little area here around the cape and his shoes. And again, I'm going to do two layers, I believe, because I want it to look nice and dark. I'm going to try not to get black into his hands or into the red. Why don't I go ahead and put the second layer in right away? Okay. Are you going to be watching any Dracula movies around Halloween? I know I am. I love to watch scary movies. <laughs> Even if I've seen them before, they still scare me. Sometimes I can't sleep after, <laughs> but I still like them. All right, I'm putting a second layer into his shoes. They're going to be nice and dark. All right. Well, at this point, my friends, I'm going to take my marker. You can continue with your black coloring pencil, but I'm going to use my marker. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to outline his hands because I want those to show up really well. And like I said, you can use your black coloring pencil if you want. And I'm going to outline his entire face, including the ears. And when you're outlining, take your time. There's no rush. 
It's a good exercise in patience and it helps you to pay attention to detail. Now while I'm here doing his eyes, I'm going to color his pupils in black. going to continue to outline his mouth and his fangs. I'm making them a little longer. <laughs> All right. And remember that little button or brooch or whatever it is, the little clip? Let's color that in black too. There we go. Now I'd like to put a little bit of detail onto his face. Vampires usually aren't happy. <laughs> they want to suck your blood. They're looking for victims, right? So we're going to make him look a little evil. We're going to give him these eyebrows. Watch. I'm going to just make his eyebrows lines like this so he looks a little, Ugh, I'm going to get ya. <laughs> and let's give him a little nose. There we go. So he is smiling, but he's not smiling because he's happy to see you. He's happy to see you because he wants to suck your blood. All right, what I'm going to do, and this is just me, I'm going to take my eraser and I'm just going to erase around his teeth because I actually, um, there's some of the pencil showing and I don't want that pencil to show. So I'm just going to erase that. That was just a mistake that I made. And a little bit around his eye. I just want that to look a little better. There we go. So there is our Count Dracula. And if you want to, you could take a little red pencil, put a little bit of red coming out of his teeth. Maybe he just sucked somebody's blood. <laughs> All right, the last thing that we always do, my friends, is we sign our work. I want you to be proud of the creation you just made. Even if it's a spooky one, I want you to be happy with what you just did and take ownership of it, ownership of it and really, really be proud. I really hope that you enjoyed this lesson, my friends. And remember, mom and dad, if you post your kids' art on Instagram, don't forget to tag me. The link is in the description below or in the About section of my channel. So we'll see you next time on Halloween Party. Thanks for watching. Bye.